The trusses are delivered in a bundle like this. Then we take them up into the workshop for fabrication. Now, after we laid all these out in, in a fashion, I'll show you in a minute, but I like to get the numbering so that the numbers are to the right ends, like TC1, that's the top cord one, then you've got the bottom cord, which is number four there. I lay them out in that fashion. I then find the middle and get the middles roughly in line through here like this to the to the peak. Over there is all the bits and pieces. I'll go around that way. These are all the bits and pieces we're packed into the into the pack. We've unpacked them and laid them out here. There's all the small ones. This little one here is number 22, 21, and it goes on the top peak, just below the peak, the, the peak itself. Now to get it into number 22, which is the one that goes across this way, it won't fit in because it's exactly the same size as the thing, that's just a little fault that they've made, they've made into this. So what I've got to do is actually bend this out. And how I do that is basically just get a rotten big hammer get it over there, give them a bang on the point there to create a bit of a bend in this section here so it'll go over the over the other beam. Now I'll just go around there. Now this piece then fits up this way facing that way up, because that's the, the top, and then fits over this piece here. Now one little trick I've learned to do with these, um, which way are we going? These, these trestles are excellent for, for um, um, getting a measure but anyway, I'll show you this first. I usually just bend these back a little bit. This then fits over the top of that. Slide this down. Past the hole. So we can get it into the thing properly. Now, all of these channels here face one way and then all the other ones face the other way. So they face out from the middle. This is the noggin that goes through the middle of the truss. It's supposed to face up this way, but there's no way knowing you can get these things in and get these holes to line up with these unless they face downwards, downwards. So that's another little fault that I found with this, um, these Meccano houses. One, two, three, three. So that goes down like that. And pump. These trestles are exactly the right height for those things. So we just pump it in like that and it's ready to go. Then we go along and get number, that was number 22. We go and get number 
20. This is number 20. Now it fits in down through this hole, down through this hole, hit the hole there, right? And it sits on an angle like that. And as you can see, the holes will line up with the beam in there. But if it was the other way around, there's no way knowing you can get this in and line up because of that. So it's got to go that way. Anyway, what I normally do is, see these little tabs on the top here? I try to bend them over a bit to get them to sit in properly. So I just give them a knock on the trestle, like that. And it just bends them in a slight bit so we can get them easily through those holes and into the, into the channel at the bottom and the top. The other thing I do is, where this comes into the channel, like in that way, these little parts here, because you're on an angle, get in the road. And they mine, they go, they sit up in here. So I've got to snip them off. Depends what's mining. So number 19 is going to sit in there like that. The channel is going to be sitting down like that. So we're going to take those, snip those two little corners off. Don't need to snip off the bottom ones because they're straight up and down. So we'll just snip those two corners off. Give them a tap on the end. Facing this way, facing that way, to the outside, we just slide those straight. Now the next thing I do is that I get the peaks together, this, this one here and this one here, and bring this one into there. And how I do that, I use a podgy bar, a little sharp podgy bar and a pair of pliers and I just clip them all together, jam the podgy bar until it lines up and that's it. Then I put a screw into it. The next thing I do is I try to get it all square. So I, I screw, I put a screw in there, a, the screw's already in the top. I screw down the far corner and that one there, and that one there, and that one there. Then I take the square and get it reasonably close to the to it where it's supposed to be. That's uh, pretty close right there. So now, as we actually keep going and putting the rest of the screws in, it'll just It'll just make itself square as we go, but at least we've got it roughly there. Now it's just a job of screwing all these down. Um, just going along and getting a screw in any hole that's, that, that you can. I'm using the Warm Milwaukee Fuel, um, it's a really great gun, Fuel 12 it is. It's been, been an excellent gun for this. Just stitching these things in. By the way, when you're doing your, when you're putting these together, make sure that the tabs 
go inside the channel and not one over the top, otherwise you'd have to pull it all apart to get them, get them in. So keep an eye on that as you go. And it's a pretty simple. Just go along and wind them up. If you drop one, just get another one, pick them up later. Right, now that we've got all of our um, brace bars in, all the way along, we need to put the gusset plates on, and they're those little plates at the end. And there's another one that goes on just here, and then there's another one that goes on just up there on the peak. And also down here on this end. They just fit on there just to hide all that and gusset that up. And then we'll roll it up. Well, that's how you produce a, or put together a um, truss. Uh, we've got another five to go and then we'll be um, <clears throat> ready to start erecting the whole thing. Uh, be sure to subscribe and the button below and uh, then you'll catch the next update which will be working on the joists and how we put that all together. Bye for now.